You've talked a little bit about circles in the past, mainly circumference and area, and that was it. But let's really dive in deep. There's a lot of cool things that go into our circles, and without circles, well, I don't know where we'd be in our life today. So it's good that we talk about it. So first of all, a circle is the locus or set of all points in a plane equidistant from a given point called the center. So basically, a circle is just a bunch of points. Like if I drew a bunch of points, 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 and they're all equidistant from the center. They're all the exact same distance. I could draw a point over here. It's the exact same distance. And that exact same distance, I think most of you know, is called the radius. So they're all the distance of r. That, that would be the radius, halfway across the circle. And we'll talk about that in just a second. So that's what a circle is. It has a center. If I wanted to name this circle, you notice the center is point C. So I could either call it circle C, or I could draw a little circle with a dot with the center and say circle C. So that this little symbol stands for circle. So I could either write out the word circle and say circle C, or I could use the symbol of that circle for circle C. So first thing we just talked about a radius, which is, well in plural it's not radiuses, it's radii. It's a segment with endpoints from the center um, to the circle. So for example, CD is a radius, CF is a radius, CE would be a radius. Yeah. We also have something called a chord. Well, a chord might be nudia. Well, a chord is a segment that has endpoints that are on the circle. So as long as the endpoints, so for example, A, B has endpoints that are on the circle, so A, B would be a chord. D, E is also a chord because it has endpoints that are on the circle. C, F would not be a chord because C is in the center. It's not on the circle. So the endpoints have to be on the circle. So basically lines that go all the way across the circle. Well, D, E also has another name, which most of us know is called the diameter. Diameter goes all the way across. So in this circle, DE would be the diameter. So it's also a chord, but since it goes to the center of the circle, we call it the diameter. And it's like the longest chord of the circle that we could have. So a few terms. So let's just name a couple here. So let's name the circle and identify the following. Well, the circle is called circle Q, because Q is the center. So let's name a radius. Well. Remember, it's from center to any endpoint. So XQ or QX, either way. So I could say XQ. Let's just name all of them. We also have W, Q. We have QY or YQ, doesn't matter. And we also have QZ or ZQ. They're all segments, so I don't put any arrows when I name them. Just have the line up top. So those are all, all my radii. How about chords? Do you have any chords? Well, remember endpoints that are on the circle. So endpoint, endpoint, they make a line. XZ is a chord. It's also a diameter, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and name that right here. XZ is a diameter and a chord. Is there another diameter that's also a chord? Yeah. WY goes to the center, has endpoints on the circle, so that makes it a chord and also a diameter. And then lastly, I think we have one more chord which is WZ, has endpoints that are on the circle. But it is not a diameter because it does not go through the center, so WZ. There we go, that's about everything. A couple more terms. Well, if two circles are the exact same, if they have the exact same radius, then we call them congruent. So down here it says if the radii are congruent, then the circles are congruent. Okay, pretty straightforward. They have the same circumference, everything like that. We also have another term you haven't heard, concentric circles. Concentric circles. Well, the key here is center, like centric. So that means con means they share it, so they have the exact same center. So circles on the same plane, they have the same center. So in this case, they share the center A, and I have a circle right here. And I also have a circle right here. So those would be concentric circles, because they share the same center. And circumference. Hopefully we're still familiar with this, but it's the distance around the circle, right? The perimeter of the circle. And it, uh, you can find it two ways. I mean, they're really the same way. So let's look at this other one. Twice the radius times pi. Remember we're not talking about apple pie. We're talking about 
mathematical pi, right? That symbol pi, like 3.14159, goes on forever and ever and ever. Well, so, so for the circumference, we can take twice the radius times pi. So 2 pi r. 2 times pi times r. Twice the radius, 2r times pi, 2 pi r. That's one way we hear it. The easy way, which most of us do, is diameter times pi. Because if I think about it, if I take 2 times the radius, 2 times the radius, well, what's twice the radius of a circle? Well, here's the radius. If I take twice the radius, don't I just get the diameter? So twice the radius is really the, the diameter. So another way I could find the circumference is just take diameter times pi, or pi d, as a lot of people will say. So, so find the circumference either way, either pi times the diameter or 2 pi r. Still get the same thing. All right, let's try a couple problems here. The diameter of circle X is 22 units. The diameter of circle Y is 16 units. And WZ is 5 units. I meant units there. Sorry about that. Okay. Find X, Y. Well, the, don't just try to throw some numbers and, and guess at this thing, right? Actually, write them in your book or write it on your sheet. It's good to see what you got. So XZ, or wait, sorry, the diameter of circle X is 22 units. So this whole thing right here is 22. Well then WZ is five. Let's just deal with this part of it right now. Well, what else do I know? I know the diameter is 22. So if the diameter is 22, the radius has to be half of that, which is 11. So now I know that from x to z is 11. So do I know what xw is now? Sure. That's got to be 6, right? Because 6 plus 5 has to add up to 11. Does that make sense so far? Yeah, and let's do the same type of thing over here on my other circle. Let me get rid of some of this information here. Okay, so so far I know that xw is 6. Well, now let's take a look. I have circle y it has a diameter of 16. So all the way across is 16. Well, the radius, that's the diameter. The radius must be half of that, which is 8. So I know from here to here is 8, which means zy has to be 3, since wz is 5. Okay, so you just really have to look really closely at your circle. Well, once I get all my pieces of information, I can just take 6 plus 5 plus 3 because I'm trying to find what x, y is, right? I'm trying to find this whole distance, x, y. So 6 plus 5 plus 3 would be 14 units. Okay, so some of these you're just going to have to look very closely and just take your time. Okay, don't rush through it. I know it seems so easy that you just want to rush through, but take your time so you don't make those little mistakes. Couple new terms, inscribed and circumscribed. Basically, inscribed means you have a vertice that lies on the circle. The vertices are on the circle. So I would say like the polygon is inscribed on a circle. So that's how I'd use that term. The polygon is inscribed on a circle. Circumscribed deals with the circle. Circle contains all the vertices of the polygon. So I would say a circle is circumscribed on a polygon. So they're kind of the same meaning, except we use inscribed with the polygon because it's almost inside of it. If I think about it, it's like inside the circle, inscribed, all the vertices have to be on the circle. Whereas the circle is circumscribed because it circles around the polygon and touches every vertice. So two little terms that we use there. All right, two more problems here. It says, find the diameter and radius of a circle to the nearest hundredth if the circumference of the circle is 65.4 feet. So let's write down what we know. We know the circumference is 65.4 feet. Well, we also know a formula for the circumference. Remember, pi d, pi times the diameter, or 2 pi r, either way. Let's just go ahead and let's plug in that 65.4 in for c, in for our circumference. So we know the circumference of this circle is 65.4, and that equals pi d. Because that's what the circumference is, pi d. Well, we can solve for d, can't we? I can simply divide by pi on both sides to solve for the diameter. 
So if I take my calculator and say 65.4 divided by pi, that's actually used the pi button and not 3.14, so we're a little more exact. So the diameter equals 20 point, well it says round to the nearest hundredth, so 8174, well round to the nearest hundredth, so we're going to say 82. 82, which means the radius has to be half of that, so let's just divide that by 2 and we got 10.41. And make sure, do we need labels? Yep, feet. So I gotta say feet, feet, done. So just using your circumference formula to solve for the diameter and the radius. Lastly, find the exact circumference of circle K. So that means I don't wanna have any decimals in here. Exact, unless the decimal terminates. So let's take a look here. Let's look at K, circle K. Well, I know this chord is three times the square root of two. I don't know anything else though. I don't know the radius, I don't know the diameter. Can I find any of those things? Well, let's think about this. Um, I got from K to here, that's a radius. Here's a radius. Well, those gotta be the exact same distance, right? So let's just call it distance X, distance X. So if those are the same distance, what kind of triangle do I have? Well, it's a right triangle. So what do I know about it? If those are the same, don't these angles opposite the sides have to be the same? So if you notice, it is a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So how do I go from the hypotenuse back to the leg? Well, we divide by what? If I think about my 45, 45, 90 triangle, it's x, x, x root 2. So to get back, we would divide by root 2. So I'm going to take 3 root 2 divided by root 2, and that's going to give me 3, right? These cancel. So I have a radius of 3. So radius equals 3. Does that help me at all? I want to find the exact circumference. Well, for circumference, we take pi times diameter, or um, 2 pi r, well, the radius is 3, the diameter has to be 6, so we got c equals pi times 6, All right, so I just plugged in 6 for the diameter here, well, I'm already exact, the circumference equals 6 pi, I don't want to type that in because I'm going to get a decimal, I can just write 6 pi as the diameter, and there's no units, there's no feet or centimeters, so we just leave it as 6 pi, so there's my circumference, 6 pi. I'm, I'm done. That's what it means by exact. We'll actually leave pi in there if it asks for exact. There you go. Little introductions into our circles.